Tomo, of course, is going to go down to loser's side bracket, and I believe they're going to play the loser of Extermination in Fool's World, the next set we're going to see. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with that being said, Tomo, if we're just going by seating alone, it's going to be, it, it would be Fool's World and Tomo. And I think that's a set that totally could be down to the wire, uh, given the roster, given especially Fool's World. Um, their kind of situation. They were kind of a pickup team that was thrown together. But when you look at Fool's World individually, it's a side of individuals and, you know, uh, players that we have seen before that have played on a notable, remarkable level even, even in top level Splatoon 1. And so when you compare that to, you know, any other pickup side that just picks up and plays any Splatoon competitive tournament online, offline, whatever, it's definitely one of the more notable ones. But with that being said, they're taking on Extermination, a side that has been Together for a while, but beyond yeah. just together for a while, this is a side that has seen some highs, certainly. Yeah, this is this is not a narrative where it's a team that's stuck together and climbed through the ranks. This has been a team that has been together for a while, and they have been at the top for a while. This is, I would say, you could make an argument for this team being one of the three best teams in the Western scene over the course of Splatoon 1's lifespan, and you're going to see why. Uh, they are the only team, I believe, in day one that ran double blaster, and they did it pretty well every game. Again, this team did not drop a game at all. Uh, the team that they ran was yeah, Echo, Banana, Kaguzo, and Majin. Uh, Nils didn't see any action. I, I think that was just because they were rolling so well, they didn't feel the need to change up what they were doing. Uh, but you're going to see Kaguzo, one of the main Lunas, one of the main players in Splatoon 1 for that Luna, still using Luna and still playing ridiculously well with it. <laughs> Majin going to be on Rapid. Uh, Echo and Banana in gate or day one, they did switch between uh, the tri Slosher. They kind of passed it back and forth. Banana every once in a while going to the end zap, and Echo every once in a while going to the fire fin uh, between tossing the Slosher back and forth. But let's talk a little bit about Fool's World. Uh, as you mentioned before, earlier in the cast, this is a team that uh, if, if Extermination has been together and been at the top forever, Fool's World is kind of the opposite, honestly. Yeah, the, an antithesis, if you will. Yes. And this is the side that, obviously, you've seen the individuals before. Obviously, the most notable one being uh, Rocket from Panda Global Squid Next Door, what have you. Danny from SRL, now from Imperius. Uh, he's been, even from Deep Blues, a, t- a side that has certainly fared well with Deadbeat in the past, the likes of Deadbeat in the past. But, you know, this is a side that, the individuals haven't played together much at all. We saw Danny and Rocket together for a little bit uh, on Squids Next Door, and I think that's just about it that's to be said about the cohesion on this team, at least from a practice, triad and true chemistry. Uh, but with that being said, they were able to make it to this point. So we've, we've ha- we have to see how they fare on, uh, against a team that has been somewhat more tried and true over time. Um, I'm I'm curious to see if Vashin ever ever you know subs in or plays for this side and how he plays with them because I know he's more of a, a creme fresh regular than anything else. But that being said, uh, or has been a as has been a creme fresh regular. But that being said, um, Maj is probably more familiar with uh, playing with extermination than the uh, these guys in Fool's World ha- have been. So yeah, obviously the big question mark is Fool's World. Are they going to be able to compete on this level? Um, that the rest of the teams are on. These other seven teams have been w- with each other for quite a while now. Are they going to be able to compete on this level? That's the first time we're going to see that. Mm-hmm. And this, it, they're going to have to deal with with the fire that extermination does bring. If you want to talk about aggressive teams, uh, there are a lot of them. Aggression, uh, aggressive team is kind of, uh, I don't know, it's a fun moniker to go with. Every team is capable to do it. The best teams know when to go in. But extermination is constantly bringing it to you. They're not just going for the body punches. They're going for every punch being a knockout punch. And you're going to see that Kaguzo, that Luna Blaster being great at coming in. Uh, But Majin just finds a way to be the anchor of the team on those pushes. The Rapid Blaster, a very strong pick at this point in Splatoon's meta. And it seemed like every time... uh, I went back and watched some of the VODs. Every time that uh, Creme Fresh and their set with Extermination was able to kind of shut things down and try to get a counter push, Majin was there with... Rapid blaster shots and two or three go down and the situation gets reset. And that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons why they're able to go in as much as they do, uh, they being extermination, because they do have that great anchor on the back end to hold things down. So, yeah, it's, I'm really interested in seeing what Comp Fool's World 
uh, puts together because you know we've seen these maps already and we've seen how quick they can go and how quick these you can just get shut out so uh, we'll see if they go two or three down at the start it's gonna be a very difficult task to get back in mm -hmm. yeah I mean that being said like just looking at the results of Fool's World, we see some potential. They've played a top European side already in Rising Mood. Went 2-1 to one against them in the best of three sets we saw in groups. Took down Honor on themselves too well. They've they've been somewhat tested, somewhat seasoned here. Slightly prepped. We'll have to see if it converts in any way here on our first game on Moray Towers. As uh, it looks like. And for the record, everyone, if you're just tuning in, that we are going to be casting each individual set in winner's side bracket. From there, we're going to be transitioning to what's left of loser's side. So we will be able to get the glimpse of the narrative that kind of forms with the teams that play on the upper level of the bracket. Mm -hmm. uh, and at least getting a peek onto these teams that do lose, we'll see if they, you know, we'll get a slight peek and we'll have to see if they've survived the storm that's down under, um, so mm -hmm. to speak. So. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's only going to be a, select, a couple select teams that do that, really. Um, and Fool's World, I, this would be a great first step if they're able to get a set win. Even a, I mean, let's, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, a game win. Yeah, game one being very important uh, in any competitive game, of course. But I, I think if they get game one, that'll show that they have something figured out about this comp that no team in day one of groups was really able to get figured out. Uh, extermination... Uh, I, I think I said it before, they went 7-0 and in sets and they went 14-0 and in games. So they found something that was working and if Fool's World is able to get this first game, that's going to be huge uh, in terms of what it's going to do for their confidence. And it looks like we finally do have all eight players in the lobby getting things set up right here. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with uh, the role that Blasters play, Tower Control, Blasters, uh, what, what do we think about Tower Control and Blasters, Eric? I think I think it's a uh, what's the word good. I think yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I think last time Doctor checked, it's good. Uh, I mean, for the most part, especially with Rapid Blaster, something like Rapid Blaster on Moray with all those points of elevation. Mm -hmm. are you kidding me? I don't want to be on the tower. Screw nope. that. I'm going around. I'm trying to flank around. I'm not. I'm not trying to let that Rapid Blaster see me for a second, a millisecond. And that's the way you have to play, especially around Majin, who definitely sports that Rapid Blaster a good bit. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody's going to do that on the behalf of Fool's World, uh, but certainly something to be considered here is Rapid Blaster on this map, even Luna Blaster, any blaster, just pick a blaster on tower <laughs> control, you're good. You're on cruise control. You're chilling. Big chilling, and even the Custom Blaster has seen a lot of play on this, because the Custom Blaster has that Inkjet special, which makes it even more dangerous on the tower. You thought you could hide behind that center pole in the tower, now I'm flying on the backside, now I'm getting the big hit. So, <laughs> I don't think we'll see any Custom Blasters here, but, you know, we might, and nope, doesn't look like it's going to be coming out. Alright, so, uh, we do see a Sniper coming out here on the part of... Fool's World, that's not something that we saw a lot there in day one, so we'll see how it plays here. You talked about snipers on this map. Right, so obviously in the first half we didn't see any team taking advantage of that, but it's looking like it's a sniper duel between Echo and PK for now. Two blasters on the side of Extermination, as we do see the Luna and the Rapid Blaster being busted out, whereas with you know, Fool's World, they're feeling somewhat comfortable with playing with the tri Slaughter, and that's about it within the realm of you know similar similarities to something like a blaster. That being said, Kagu, the Luna Blaster, will be taken down by Denny here uh, with the tri Slaughter, hopefully able to clear out the rest of this team as mm. Fool's World, they've been able to take out two in the first interaction here in the middle. Let's see if they're able to do anything with that. Yeah, we they were able to take out two there, but like we talked about earlier, Majin, that anchor just shutting down any momentum that was able to come in. Right. Now we're going to see... I mean, now it's now it's Extermination's ball. They're making the push here. And we do see two ink armors on the part here of Fool's World as Majin picks up an assist. Uh, only one here on the part of EXT, but they're making it work right now. We're going to get to that first checkpoint, but it looks like Majin in a difficult situation. I think Kagu bailed him out on that other side. Okay. And, all right. Yeah, no, not bad at all. They did lose the push, but they're going to get a chance to bring it right back. I mean, that being said, you still see Fool's World. There's only one down at a time. They're not doing too badly here. That being said, E-Leader will go down. PK will go down from Fool's World, and they're going to have to play it safe someone here, but Danny's going to go Whoa. down. Oh. Contest. oh, my goodness. That's a maybe triple. I don't want uh, Nope. Okay. Only going to be two technically delayed triple. Maybe. That being said, Majin able okay, to keep the dance and dive and dive and <laughs> able to get that third kill. Nicely done on Majin's part. 
unfortunately, in the meantime, it looks like they weren't able to keep that tower pushing. Danny's going to be able to help his team recover and get back in this tower towards the second checkpoint, which is pretty big. Past that second checkpoint, if you leave that open, it is all downhill from there, especially with, you know, tower control and more. It's that second checkpoint is really the barrier to get past it once you've gotten past there. That's that's I won't say game set and match, but it's definitely something more close to that. Yeah, and one thing I want to point out, uh, two or three times now, Kagu has gotten all the way to the overlook of... Whoa, that was, I think the ink armor saved him right there. Uh, but two or three times now, Kagu has gotten onto the overlook, that high, high area on the left. That does not bode well. If Kagu's continuously getting around your team, uh, you know, that really does not bode well for your chargers. It doesn't bode well for your tower pushes. So we're, we're seeing a little bit of an offensive push here on the part of Fool's World, but they're going to have to mitigate that if they're going to make any pushes. And it looks like any offense that they may have had is now going to be shut down as uh, Flip, unfortunately, off alone here and going to survive. But now. yeah, this is by, by yourself in this position on the map. Very difficult. And finally, Flip does go down. Yeah, able to survive for a little bit there, but unfortunately using a special to stay alive is not a good sign for things to come. Kagu there with the roller, not able to get within a good range. Oh, able to push him out, but only just for a little bit before Kagu gets to splat there. Gonna sneak up on the wall here to see if anybody will be suspecting him. I believe the answer is no oh, for now. He He's it. gonna lead a somewhat of a charge, gets in direct on the rocket as well, and it looks like mm, it's have yep. been certainly let down. And if this is not a win, direct outright win, it's certainly good enough probably lead to a win in a minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> well, all well, right. That's, we that's all right. <laughs> that's fine. Wow. Great, great job there. Knocking the baller off, playing soccer with it. Any, I, I was thinking of a million sports references and none of them came out in the right time, but <laughs> I, <laughs> good job. Baller, <laughs> fun special to look at. But like you said, the floodgates are open past that second checkpoint now, whereas Fool's World really hasn't gotten even anything really going now. Kagu finding ways to move around the map. Majin has been set up shop here in zone the entire game. Gonna shut down another would-be pusher here. And now we're gonna put pressure on this E-leader as well and this yeah. is very, very it. difficult. <laughs> Rather great. And it's it's surprising at least for not surprising in the sense that you look at these two teams on paper and think, wow, how could this have happened? But from the first fight we saw from Fool's World, we I saw I saw a good bit of potential. You saw them winning the first cohesive team fight in the middle of the map, and they seem to be doing something with it. They seem to be keying in on you know moving that kind of in front line. Let's get the, uh, let's get an established sense of control before we move the objective up further. But unfortunately, they weren't able to push past that, and for some reason, they haven't been able to recover. That's a sign of a team that has been together for too much at all. Uh, that's a sign of a team that maybe hasn't learned to communicate best with each other or uh, just simply working together. So if they're able to push anywhere past this 72 point mark, great for them. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And I think that's a real we've seen a real indicator like how they play uh, so far as a team. Uh, maybe the mo not the most optimal. We were able to see, you know, them successfully putting together an effort up front on that first on that first get together in the middle maybe on the behalf of their individual play, but we have to see them step it up more than that. Mm -hmm. And the big difference I'd say is that map is we is we talked about it, Kagu able to get behind and put that flanking pressure on the longer range shooters there, the 96, and of course that E leader of Fool's World. And we just weren't able to see that coming back on the point of Fool's World. They had the tools to do it. They did have the tri slosher. They did have a shooter. Um, but you know, maybe and maybe it is indicative of a team that hasn't been together that long, not really being able to get those those flanks as they need to, uh, timely with the pushes that it seemed that Kagu was able to do. But I mean, that's that's what's got to happen. The anatomy of a push. A lot of things have to go right to get those big deep pushes, or wrong if you're on the other side. And it just seems like extermination could feel those out. It seems like the blasters were always where they needed to be, and I mean, that's game one. That's game one. And they were, yeah, I like what you said. They were always where they needed to be in the game. They were picked. The thing is, you know, if Fool's World not picking a single blaster probably hurt them. And so they maybe I would hope, I mean, obviously this changes from game type to game type, right? But if you're looking at what's going on on Muscle Forge Fitness with the kind of different arches and, you know, elevations and angles to shoot from, 
you're going to want to pick a blaster mate. This is mm -hmm. something that you have to slot your team comp somehow. And if it's got to be on someone to step up and say that. Yeah, and right now, public enemy number one is absolutely going to be Majin. The rapid blaster is such a strong weapon on here. And of course, Majin not going to switch off that. We do see the mini splatling, not something that we see a lot. That thing is a factory for Tenta missiles. So we'll see. It's still, it's still good in this game, guys. It's not the Zimmy, but it's still pretty good. And uh, we'll see now if Banana is able to show you that. But uh, we see oh, it. Kaga going down. Yeah, Kaga going down big. And this is the opening that they were looking for here. Um, two, on, two down both sides, though. Yeah, two down both sides. That was unfortunate. But we do see Rocket in the middle here. Going to get a little bit of ink control if he so chooses. Going to go down here using that patented T-Tech. But uh, this is a nice neutral start. This is, you know, they haven't, nothing's really broken up so far. And it seems like, uh, oh, as, as I say that, Kagu somehow always finding a way through. Oh, and this poor E-Leader not going to have oh! a chance. <laughs> Getting the shot on before the wall goes down. Nicely done in Kagu's part. You're going to be able to start a push up. An incredibly aggressive oh, one at that. Gets the needed angle onto the rocket. Fortunately enough, they're going to be able to move this one rather quickly here for extermination. And Kagu doing so much on it on his own right to be able to get this Rain Ranger pushed towards the late 20s. Mm -hmm. Kind of interesting to see them not go left and follow that push that uh, Kagu had gotten them. But going right and getting to the 20s, I'd, hey, maybe Kagu is just the world's best distraction in that scenario. Both sides very, very dangerous. And now, now the map is transitioned. Now most of the map is going to be played in that danger zone of Fool's World. And, you know, the Rainmaker resets nowadays, but it's still very dangerous if it's constantly being pushed in your face like this. Now Banana going to get a chance here to make a push. And you got to watch nice out. Snipe. Yeah, nice snipe. Very clutch snipe because Majin was coming around that left side. Kagu's still back, though. This danger's not out yet. Yeah, I, th I think it should be subsided there for the most part. I mean, they aren't looking at what they were looking at before, which was, okay, maybe they are. But either way, <laughs> two, two, okay, it's the exact oh, same situation. Yep. Two up, now only one up, and one of those people up is a sniper, which is really tough to be able to defend with. If Extermination get their front line going, they should be able to lock this one down. With that being said, Rocket being able to come up just in time to at least get some ink in front of the Rainmaker, make it tough for them. Sniper doesn't make the first shot. Is going to delay this Rainmaker push or at least defend for a little bit. That being said, they should be starting to close down on this. Danny acting as a front line is eventually going to indirectly shove off that Rainmaker. <laughs> <laughs> That's the polite way of putting it. That's as functional. Two, two members from Food World going down once again. They're going to have to recover rather quickly as Kagu still is oh, pushing yep. in deep into their base. Being quite the nuisance here. Flip is the only one really uh, toward the Rainmaker and is doesn't see. Okay, my teammates have called. Yeah, there's, there's someone around. I've, I've got to uh, help them out. And that's a really good indicator for Flip to be able to respond to immediately to Team Comps. Mm -hmm. They're able to move uh, now finally back in a little bit. You see a little bit of blue ink now creeping oh, into that middle. Flip. No, oh, my. Flip. flip. And that's a 1v1 that really hurts to lose there, especially against the Splatling. It does. But now we're finally seeing it. They were able to get some blue in the middle. Now Danny, the only one in the middle, may be able to get this kill on Majin. Not going to be able to. Neither one going down. Uh, but now we finally see a little bit of counterplay here. They still have to deal with Majin. Echo set up very well here on their left side. And, oh, uh, it looks like, yep, Kagu. Kagu, 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 please. <laughs> yeah, Kagu, Kagu found a way through. Yeah, uh, like like every other minute of this of this map so far. <laughs> honestly, true. we've seen him extend, especially breaking through that left ink line, getting deep into the enemy base, and dealing with players one-on-one -on -one before finally someone calls someone over to deal with him, and that takes a long time to do. Kagu's definitely been a thorn in the side of Fool's World in this game, and they have a minute and 20 seconds to figure it out. It looks like they might be doing that. They have yeah, Kagu's yeah. in control. There goes armor. Down. Oh. Uh, but not in time. Not in time. No, very unfortunate here, but Flip still in a pretty aggressive position. Gotta be careful not to get splatted out by this E-Leader in the bomb. Rocket, I think that was the end of his uh, Ink Zuka. Flip's really going to be the last one here. Got to be able to get a splat here so his teammates can come back. And I think that's Flip two of his teammates going here. down. Yep. Oh. No. Unfortunately, no. Yeah, the thing is, Rainmaker being reset, you have to be able to have your eyes on it at all times now. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you can just play ahead of and ignore. And unfortunately for Flip in that situation, he was in a 1v3 situation and he needed a 10 to the Rainmaker. <laughs> no way for him to get that one done. 38 seconds left to go in this one. And they're going to hop off with this one. They have two down right now. Great play from them to recognize that. Yeah, they three did. Down, yeah, three down. They put it down there, and there was only one up on the part, uh, that being Rocket Tech, uh, on the part of Fool's World. And now Kagu going to force him down nice. there. 
Majin and Echo are gonna split that kill. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this Majin is just once again. Yeah, this has looked a lot better than the last game, but we I feel like we keep saying the same names over and over. Kagu, <laughs> Majin, Poor Flip, a lot of things that we're staying here, and that's, you know, they Majin again here gonna get a chance to flank, get a kill on anything that might have been around there. And just smothering. This is, we talked about it earlier, just pressure, pressure, pressure. And Hitzel talks about it sometimes that you need game winning pressure consistently if you want to win at this level. And that's what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, extermination doing a job well done, especially with what you called uh, an Inkzuka, what, what really was an inkjet towards the end of that game. Oops. <laughs> I will do that several times. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Either way. Uh, really impressive 20, 20 kills coming out on the behalf of Kagu there towards the end. Not a single roller used either. <laughs> really, really display. He probably, would, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't up enough to be able to use it. But <laughs> maybe not, honestly, for a Luna Blaster like him. Probably not even the most efficient means of using that weapon. Uh, especially on something like Muscle Forge where it can get so quickly deep into enemy base and camp around them all you want yeah of course yeah you're gonna be able to use that luna blaster to your heart's content that's exactly what he did there uh in game two let's see if that changes any for game three uh i know that you know extermination they've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves fool's world definitely got something going towards the latter part of that game but it's a control that was <laughs> i hesitate to say control it felt very fragmented the, the one two pushes that fool's world did have on muscle forge it came with one members one member is going down or two members going down at a time they were able to make it individually and once again more of that kind of narrative well well they do play well as individuals certainly we've seen them you know if not in solo queue on previous tournament casts in other teams but you know when put together will they be able to show up they have one more opportunity maybe potentially to prove that mm -hmm. and pk gonna go with the fire fin we saw rocket use this earlier to great effect uh, but I think the big thing is, uh, of course, now with the counter sniper is something that we haven't seen. Are they going to be able to kind of contain Kagu? I, I know we've said that so many times, but you already see Kagu working to that very frontal position. Banana going to pick up the kill, and Kagu still there. Kagu in zone now. Uh, Rocket does get a pretty nice flank here off the left side. Going to get the kill on Banana, and going to get away from Kagu as well. This How do you is do it? nicely done. Around. Yes, be able excellent. to get a double there. Yeah, they're uh, going to take the zone. Yeah, nicely done. It, at least to be able to stop and put a quick penalty. Uh, Danny now with the elevation that he's able to get with that tri slasher, he's going to be able to get another one. Echo going down to the sniper is a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll have to see if they're able to convert on this further. They should be able to get the lead here. Danny, smartly so, leads the 10 missiles away from the splat, uh, splat zone. And it should be able to help at least to some degree keep this zone in control. They're able to at least push the rest of Creme Fresh out. But with that being said, Danny is going to have to put a world's effort here to be able to keep the zone contested right now. Not going to be able to do it. And Extermination able to get back once again into control. Let's see if Fool's World can get back into zone. Mm -hmm. And those Tenta missiles, really, you, you said great job to Danny for leading them away. He had to because three people were locked on by there and it really fragmented their positioning. They had moved uh, PK up to the front of the zone in a great sniping position. And those Tenta missiles can do it. Everyone talks about a lot of the other specials in the game, but never underestimate those Tenta missiles on the part of Banana. Banana going to get taken down, I believe, by the splatter shot. And now this is the best that uh, this is the best they've looked here. Fool's World, they yeah. might be able to get the lead back here. Only a few seconds left on this penalty. He's able to get the kill here on Kagu, and he nice. is crucial kill. Great job by Flip, and this should be the lead if these ten missiles don't completely ruin the plans. Yeah, it looks like for now it, it looks like they should be able to have the cold zones. Um, with Flip being up, being somewhat close to zone, being able to contest the likes of extermination here, but with that being said, being forced to use Splash on so far away from zone is definitely an indicator that extermination will be able to take control. That being said, you know, extermination, they don't have the lead just as of yet. Fool World does have the room to be able to do something here. Gets a 10th missiles away from zone. They do at least stop control for just a minute, but the penalty is still being put down. Gets the splat onto middle of the zone. Oh. Isn't able to splash down just in time, and it looks like the lead will be taken. As Kagu here, with two minutes left to go, might be able to get some semblance of control with added splats here to the left and right of him. He is able to spot out Danny. Maybe able to get to know the Arch of the Slosher. Danny able to shut down Kagu there. Not for the first time either. Doing the job well done in big. multiple efforts. 
all three members of EXT back in this nice quarter. Diddy's kill. gonna get two, and he got the assist on the third one. This is what they've been looking for. They see Majin here. That's big. Majin had worked his way all the way over to that left side. Majin's not going to be able to influence a whole lot here, but he does get... Oh, he gets his bomb rush. Is that going to be enough? It does neutralize it, but... Oh, Danny it's a bucket. Up huge. Danny's he in the middle it. here. He has to get the uh, at least Alice extermination from control, and he does. He pushes them to the left side of zone, and that's going to be enough to take control of it. Why down the penalty? But will it be enough? Birth Bomb's coming in. No. And that, yeah, they weren't actually there on top of zones to be able to defend the couple of Burst Bombs, the two, three, four Burst Bombs that came on for the split second they weren't attending to it. And that's got to be heartbreaking for Fool's World, and they were in such a great position to be able to at least recover and they still are make no mistake but that there's no penalty it's at 30 points right now an extermination yeah and a formidable position to take this game and set a beautiful right side flank by kagu that really spurned that whole thing they had to take care of kagu and because of that they were not able to paint danny does it's get a kill up. right here they get control, control. again Will he be able to help his team here, though? He'll be able to push this one even further. Banana has been a thorn in the sides of Fool's World for quite a good bit. Being There's a Majin. Nicely done on his part. Now, will Danny be able to at least patrol the entirety of this and do so well as to can be able to spot out the majority of uh, extermination here, going from left and right, attacking from all kinds of sides? It looks like they're going to offer the left side here, and it fits on that part. Uh, they will get they it. Be able to cover? Yeah, they will be able to get it. They get the lead for now with 25 seconds left to go. And now they have a penalty attempt to. It's really going to come down to this fight to see if they will be able to come out on top. Looks like Splashdown goes down in the middle. Uh, some penalty being put on once again, but only one being up. 1v1, right 1v1. It's a quick and straight up 1v1. Will Rocket be able to come out on top? It's against the Rapid Blaster. He, uses ink armor. he needs to be able to get in pretty soon here. Sniper does come out. But will Fools will be able to keep this one and at least get some of the control? It looks like one will go down. They still are focusing on the team fight, but as of now, it looks like Extermination will be able to keep control. There's only one available, and it's still the Sniper. Get some Burst Bombs down onto it to be able to stop the counter. Still in favor of Extermination, no. and it looks like that should be it. They win the team fight, and that's going to convert into an overall win on Extermination's behalf as we, as we finally see the first close game. Fools World, unfortunately, going down in the team fight, leading to the win there and the sniper being all out on their own didn't really have too many devices to really survive by went on and did what they could but unfortunately was not enough there and that's got to be heartbreaking if if you're fool's world not only losing in that way but rocket did have his ink armor and used it to give them the chance uh, i guess you could say the edge in that team fight unfortunately not quite able to get it done um, blasters blasters versus dink armor it's something that we've talked about a little bit it's something that'll be worth looking at in the future of this meta that splash damage just kind of able to chip things away and uh, just not the trades that they needed not the trades that they needed but you know we talked about momentum with a loss earlier there's no such thing as a good loss but if you're fool's world you have to figure you have to feel like you got something going on there at the end that was your best game one or two misplays away from taking that game from extermination and i would not at all be surprised to see them make a big big run in the losers bracket yeah for sure i mean they seemingly were able to finally get some some semblance of you know, their act together it, and i i started seeing some glimpses of hope for them so hopefully they'll be able to convert on that and what will be a great set to watch or if we can't watch it at least to see the result of between Fool's World and Tomo happening in the loser bracket. Not sure when that'll be happening, but it will be a great one to see. I'm sure people will be streaming it on their own right, so definitely tune that out if you're able to, uh, tune into that if you're able to. Uh, but with that being said, I mean, great set. We are going to be able to see Extermination on the winner's side uh, take on Deadbeat, which is going to be a certainly fun one to see. Mm-hmm.